which um, I've already made one which I thought was pretty simple but I believe people are struggling with it still. I've seen some necklines on uh, various forums and thought, yeah, you can see people are struggling. So somebody's taught me a different way, brought up a different way for us that we could use in our group. And I'm gonna show you how to do that so you can create your own pattern using this method, which um, I tried out for the first time this weekend. And it's actually really easy. So we're creating this pattern that's going to sit like that. So there's the scrub. And then we're going to create a pattern piece so that we can just cut on the fold. So we're, we're creating this shape, but because I haven't got the pattern for you to, uh, to give you, um, it's a good learning curve for you. You can learn how to create this pattern for yourself from scratch. We're gonna start with a straight line at the top as uh, always. So you need a clean point for reference. So let's have that there. Okay, so that's going to be the top of the shoulder. And I always bring the neckline down an inch and a half here. And I bring it in four inches there. Okay. Right. We're going to drop this shoulder down two inches because it's a grow on sleeve. That's a new term I've learned as well. It's a grow on sleeve. I'm going to bring it down all the way down two inches at the end. You can, if you want to give it some shape so it has a sort of a shoulder and then it, it eases down. So we can sort of do something like that if you want to. So I will bring that out about four, five inches, a slight angle there, and then sort of ease it off a little bit more there. So it sort of feels a little bit more natural. So the next thing we want to do is mark down the chest point. So from the shoulder, we're gonna come down 12 inches. Now I'm going to draw it in the biro there so you can see it, but it's not in the marker. So it's there. And that's going to give me the shape I need the amount of ease that you add is really up to you if you're making it for yourself. 10 and a half plus two and a half, that makes it 13. And then if I mark 13 inches there, there, and then add a centimetre of seam allowance. Really, don't, know, don't ask me why I do seam allowances in centimetres. That's going to be the point there of my curve. So that's the point at which I can create a sleeve, which will go at an angle here, and I can curve round to make the chest have as much ease on the waist. And I will reduce that down to 12 and a half, and then bring that up to 12 and a half, and then add a centimeter uh, um, for my seam allowance, and that will come to here. And I want the pattern to be quite long. I'm going to make it um, 30 inches long. So I can create that hemline there now at 30 inches. At 12 and a half. And then I've got the basis of my pattern, which now I can curve around and create a sleeve. I'm going to make the sleeve an inch above there. Again, it's one of those things, you can do this to, the, to your comfort level. So I'm going to draw that in, crossing over there at the bust line, and then just curve the shape of your pattern. There we go. I'm working at an angle here. So if I place this now on the angle of the drop of the shoulder and just bring it down, these rulers are great for, for doing this sort of job. I can see how far I can go. I can go a bit further and draw a sleeve, a longer sleeve up to there. And then I can match that up like that. You can have that curve, as curve as you want. You can make it square if you want to. 
and there you go and you can shape if and then I just need to draw so I'm going to mark that four inches point that we had at the neckline and uh, we had a two inch drop but I'm actually going to drop this down eight inches to where the bottom of the v-neck goes instead of drawing a v-neck now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to split this piece up and create what is known as a yoke so I'm going to draw that line in I'm going to draw it all the way across and that's going to be my cutting line. So that's going to create a front piece there and another front piece there. And I will need to sew them. So when I cut this, I need to allow for a centimeter seam allowance on both sides. So I have two strips of paper here, which I can add one centimetre to each piece. Like that. And I've cut it on a straight line there. Right, so that's going to be what it looks like. So. I've got that piece done. I don't need to worry about that now. I can get rid of that. You need to allow a two centimetre extra allowance for the placket. So actually that's where the neckline starts and it comes down to there. And I will end up having a one centimetre opening there and it joins to the bottom. That's actually having to come down two centimetres. Okay, and it's going to go through the mark like that. The placket is a four centimetre piece. It's not cut on a straight, so it's not cut along the selvage and it's not cut across the weft. It's actually cut on the bias. So it needs to be at 90 degrees. Draw the line there. This is imagining that you're cutting on a fabric. If you do it on a piece of paper, it, it won't matter. Just remember that you want to have a straight of grain going this way. So I'm making this eight centimeters wide and that's going to be folded over and straight. Just leave it straight. Don't make it over complicated for yourself for us for a beginner um as a beginner just do that when you get to the sewing part you can trim it then and that will be big enough to go on my neckline when i sew it on there we go so that's going to be way more than i need isn't it right you can't see through it but it is place it underneath like that so it matches up like that. I'm going to pop a couple of pegs in there. Hold the paper nice against that edge. And I'm going to cut along here. And then cut the shape of your neckline. Of the shape of the shoulder there we 
we go. And then that's your facing done, essentially. You can leave it how you want, So, but that's your facing. Um, traditionally, I suppose, what people like to do is they like to fold the curve round and then have a facing shape like that. But definitely mark it up so you know where it sits. And that's going to be on the fold of the fabric, like this pattern piece is. And we can call that back facing, back, neck, facing. Pretty straightforward, okay? That's that one done. Scrap. So cut out back. The, um, the front neck line. Like so. So there we go. So that is really an easy pattern. It's a little bit complicated to create the pattern more than um, usual. But when it comes to sewing it all together, you might find it's going to be really easy. So that will go there. And that's the facing for the back. 